One of the first things that I wanted to cover here is optimizing tissue thickness and antibody concentration. This is one of the most important steps in adopting tissue clearing into any research workflow, regardless of what tissue clearing technique that you're working with. The reason for this is that many researchers will see one of these papers with a whole brain labeled and imaged in 3D, and they'll want to do that without realizing that that is terabytes of data. It's extreme data processing. It's also incredibly challenging to label an entire tissue and could have taken months, if not years, to get that protocol in place for that single image they see in a paper. And because of that, we have a protocol here for optimizing labeling, starting small, and trying to ensure that you can achieve uniform labeling for your tissue before you move up to that whole brain-sized tissue that you're interested in. And for many questions, going to a very large size tissue is actually not ideal, which I'll talk about in a moment here. So tissue size, this is the most important consideration for tissue clearing and where we see the most issues with people adopting tissue clearing into their workflow. What most researchers do is they start way too large with a the tissue, they spend weeks trying to optimize with their antibody labels, and they spend hundreds if not thousands of dollars on labels trying to get them to label their large tissue. The problem with this is that tissue labeling time triples when tissue thickness doubles. Therefore, if you go from a one millimeter mouse brain slice to a whole hemisphere, the amount of time required to label that tissue piece dramatically increases. What we suggest to pretty much all researchers is to take tissues, such as a mouse brain hemisphere or a whole mouse brain, and to slice it into one millimeter thick pieces for imaging and for tissue processing. This dramatically reduces the amount of time required to process your tissue and also allows you to image with traditional air objectives on any confocal microscope. If you go much thicker than that, labeling becomes a tremendous problem and issue and takes a very long period of time, and you also need special optics and special microscopes to even image the tissue if you can label it. So therefore, we practically suggest that researchers pare that desire down to one millimeter sections instead of going after a whole hemisphere. This allows for much easier imaging, much quicker studies, and you can digitally reconstruct these sections back together later if your research question requires that, but most research questions do not. Now, the choice of antibody is very important. We have optimized several antibodies with AbCam that allow us to get uniform penetration through one millimeter mouse brain sections, as well as 3D cell culture models in their entirety. Not all antibodies are created equal. You should choose antibodies validated for IHC. Different antigens will behave differently. You'll see that some antibodies will label very easily throughout the entire depth of a one millimeter mouse brain section, and for others, they won't get that far at all, and you'll really have to optimize the process of getting those labels across your tissue. Now, monoclonal versus polyclonal. Monoclonal has less background, but potentially less signal. Polyclonal, possibly higher background, but of course, a brighter signal. And some commercial antibodies do not work well in 3D at all. So GFAP, for example, in some cases, you'll have no signal from one uh, marker you're working with, but excellent staining with another marker, such as Abcam's Chicken IgY anti-GFAP um, antibody. So there's a lot of screening that needs to take place before you can jump in to try and label your entire tissue. And we've worked extensively with Abcam to validate Abcam antibodies for labeling throughout the entire depth of um, 3D cell culture models and one millimeter mouse brain sections. It's an um, effort up front, but allows you to really adopt um, tissue clearing and tissue labeling much more rapidly into your research. So a lot of effort should go into choosing an antibody before you dive in to try and label a very thick piece of tissue. Now, antibody concentration is really important. So if we think about going too high or too low, we're going to get not a lot of signal. We're going to get a lot of signal, but the signal might only be on the exterior of our tissue because that antibody might not be able to penetrate into our tissue because it's blocking itself from getting in there. And I'll talk about this in the next few slides, but you can cause a dense ring around your tissue of staining if you go too high with your concentration, whereas if you go too low, you're just not going to get enough signal back to actually be able to detect it. So it's a fine line behind trying to get lots of signal and also trying to get um, your antibody throughout your tissue, which I'll talk about in a moment here. Now, antibody concentration is a balancing act. If we go too low or we go too high, we'll have issues with actually getting signal or getting our antibodies stuck on the outside of our tissue, which you'll see in a couple images coming up here.
So if I go with my optimal concentration, I'm going to get good penetration through my tissue, but if I go with a concentration that's too high, the antibody will actually block the channels through the tissue, and outside antibody that's not inside my tissue yet will not be able to penetrate into it. I'll get a very dense ring of staining on the outside of my tissue. This is a telltale sign that our concentration is too high for the antibody that we're working with. And with uniform labeling across the entire depth, we'll see that all of our epitopes are labeled quite evenly to the depth of our tissue, whereas, again, with a concentration too high, we'll get uneven staining. We'll get some pockets of staining, but we'll get a very dense band of staining outside of our um, tissue of interest, which is, of course, not ideal. We want to have that label go across the entire depth of our model that we're working with. The way we suggest optimizing antibody concentration is to start small. This is really what we tell every researcher is before you dive into that large piece of tissue that you're trying to work with, start small. So cut a few thin sections, so 100 to 300 micron thick sections of your tissue of interest, and process these tissues through our antigen retrieval steps, block tissues in block and buffer, incubate the tissues with varying concentrations of antibody, and then see what happens. Use an epifluorescent microscope to specifically see how far the staining is getting across these tissues through cutting a vertical wedge across the depth of the tissue and looking to see how far that labeling has actually gotten. And what you'll see is that for certain concentrations, you'll get a dense band of labeling on the outside, but you won't get penetration. For lower concentrations, you might get a more uniform labeling, but that signal is not high enough. So by titrating in small sections, we can see does our label actually get into tissues, and can we get labeling across a large depth of tissue with changing the, uh, the concentration and also potentially changing the incubation time. This will allow you to know very early on that, hey, my antibody does not work at all for thick sections, and I should try a different antibody. And then, as you get uniform labeling at 100 or 300 micron section of tissue, move up in tissue thickness till you get to your ideal tissue thickness. You'll actually reach a limit where you'll realize that you can't get uniform penetration past a certain depth. And that's really the depth that's limited by that antibody, but you need to find that empirically through studying exactly how that penetration is affected by these parameters. Incubation time changes a lot with thickness, like I mentioned before. So if we're looking at a very thin section, like 100 or 125 microns, it can be about 30 minutes or so to get labeling across the depth of that. However, we're trying to label, let's say, a whole mouse brain or a hemisphere. If that label can get across that entire depth, it could take 40 to 120 hours or longer, and that's with primary labeling. Secondary labeling, of course, is going to double that time to get more signal back to the detector on your imaging system. So it really is an advantage of cutting your tissue into smaller pieces, whether it's a mill or two mills, and then imaging those and processing those instead of trying to image a whole mouse brain hemisphere or a whole brain. There's very little practical reason to ever try and image a whole brain or a whole hemisphere when smaller sections can be imaged, analyzed, and pieced back together to dramatically save you time, uh, money, and to just reduce the barrier to adoption of tissue clearing and to imaging. So always try and start small with um, tissue labeling and, of course, tissue clearing. In this next section, we're going to talk about imaging and how to actually acquire data from your tissues that have been imaged in 3D and what that process looks like for choosing the right labels, looking at secondary labeling of our antibodies, and how best to process our tissues with the ABCAM and historeagents and antibodies.